So we've covered that curriculum. Yes. There is the straight basic curriculum that everybody thinks that's happening in the school systems, moderated by the local school systems. But I would be remiss because we are Granite Rock, New Hampshire's leading political blog site, that we also know that there's a lot of politics that are going on in the classroom, oftentimes unknown until somebody makes a recording of it and then it goes viral. I am a proponent of not having <coughs> politics at all, whether it be right, of my persuasion, or on the left. Do you have any kind of cases that come up dealing with those kinds of issues? Because from my standpoint, I'm seeing it happen more and more and more. And I'll tell you why. I have on record, and that I have put up on Granite Rock, teachers telling parents, we have taught your kids to know more than you. There is a condescending attitude by teachers in a variety of areas that believe that the kids belong to them and not to the parents. And therefore, they are entitled to impart their morality of whatever stripe and in whatever area as opposing to the parents. So I'm curious to see, and, and I'm sorry if I put you on a hot spot here, but it, this is a big deal on Granite Rock. <clears throat> so yep. if you could... Well, let me back up and I'm gonna explain kind of the big sure. picture and then I think we can drill down a bit. So um, again, the State Board of Education creates what's referred to as minimum standards for education. So okay. they are adopting standards and they're defining what they want students to know. And those are referred to as minimum standards of education. The state board and the department are not involved in curricular decisions, right? They're saying the what we want the kids to know and understand, um, and then that is given to the local school board to, discern, to determine how they're gonna do it. And curriculum is very much a how they're gonna learn that stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> By all means. Can you I'm clip that out? <laughs> I'm suffering the same thing, so not mm -hmm. to worry. So are a lot of our readers. There you go. That I met yesterday in Concord. Okay. So we are, so again, so the, the, the state board and the department um, are not involved in those curricular level decisions. Those are determined at the local level. Um, we uh, at the department, and I believe, um, you know, the board would agree with this, but you'd have to get a separate, you know, have separately ask them, um, would hope and aspire uh, that our educators are focused on academic content in the classroom. Um, teaching this, the kids the academic content that they need in order to be, um, you know, knowledgeable, uh, well-educated, so that they can become good citizens. Um, it is my hope, and I think it is an aspiration that we would, we hopefully we all share, that educators are not bringing into the classroom uh, political bias or really any kind of viewpoint bias. Um, and what they really should be doing, and I hope that this is what is happening in most of our classes, is that educators are teaching students that there are multiple perspectives on all different kinds of issues and that they are teaching them how to engage multiple perspectives. One of the things that I have observed is um, uh, um, some of the, the schools have debate teams, right? And these debate teams, particularly for high school students, are very valuable for the students because they learn two really important things. One is that they learn to be able to see a problem from different perspectives, right? Because when you're in a debate you know, uh, competition, you may not know if you're gonna be affirmatively arguing for something or you know, arguing against it. So you have to learn to look at something from different perspectives to be able to formulate arguments from different perspectives. And I think when students are equipped to do that, it builds empathy for them to be able to recognize that, hey, I may not be right. Maybe there's another perspective to this issue so that they can see all sides. And so I hope that it's the aspiration for our teachers to equip students with that capacity to be able to see stuff from 360 degrees. Um, your question was specifically about some of the complaints that come here. And sometimes we do receive complaints uh, about uh, activities 
or materials or curricular um, you know supports in a school that may not meet what should probably be some of that uh, <coughs> you know, non-bias, you know, viewpoint, non-viewpoint bias types of information. Um, and so when those come to us, we deal with those on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay, fair enough. And uh, thanks for letting me put you on the hot seat for a moment. Not a hot seat. I, I mean, again, we want to equip these kids to be good citizens. And to be a good citizen, you have to be able to see things from a 360-degree view, uh, to know that there are different perspectives, that everybody is not going to have the same view. Um, Yes. <clears throat> well, I just enjoy the fact that you just did my segue for me because my next question was citizen versus workforce. Clock TV.